So Baldur's Gate 3 is on sale right now, and I thought this would be the perfect time to talk about what the best class is for new players in Baldur's Gate 3 and rank them all on a tier list. So there's some that are a little bit more complex to others due to the intricacies of the subclasses, but I'll be covering all of these and talking about what the best subclasses are for your first time and just my general thoughts on these. So the first one that we have here is the Barbarian. So what makes the Barbarian interesting is they have the unarmored defense and the rage. So the rage mechanic gives you an extra two damage whenever you're attacking with a melee improvised weapon or a throwing attack this is a bonus action to go into your rage you also will take half damage from physical sources so piercing bludgeoning and slashing damage you also get the unarmored defense which adds your constitution modifier to your armor class so if you mouse over the constitution here we have a plus two to constitution armor class is the number that the target has to roll to be able to hit your your character so adding your constitution modifier to it is really nice it's only if you're wearing clothing though if you put on light armor or medium armor it's not going to work so you kind of have to decide early game what's going to be better having a high constitution will help out with this and if you get your constitution up to 16 that's a plus three in addition you will also add the dexterity modifier so having a high constitution and dexterity works well for this the thing with the barbarian is a bit complex because going into rage is it takes a bonus action and then you have to know how to use rage effectively because it's not as straightforward as something like the fighter which is more of a martial class and just it's straightforward with its fighting the barbarian is a fun class in general but i just think that it is a little bit complex for new players uh you also will get carlock as an origin she is a she's a character that you'll get early on in the game who is a barbarian so if you really want to experiment with it you can you can get her so overall, I would probably say that the Barbarian is around B tier because of the complexities of the Rage mechanic. Now, the two best subclasses, I would say, are the uh, Berserker Barbarian, which lets you go into Frenzy instead of just the good old-fashioned Rage, or the Wild Heart. And if you go Wild Heart, the Bear Heart and the Tiger Heart are the two strongest. The Bear Heart will resist all damage types except Psychic, and the Tiger Heart gets a cool cleave attack that applies bleed. So those are the best of them but it is a little bit more complex for new players. However, the next class that we have here, the Bard. And I'm a big fan of the Bard. So the Bard is based on charisma. And I do think that the, for a first time playing through, you should play as a class that's high in charisma because if you're gonna be talking to characters a lot, you wanna have a high charisma stat. Also, the Bard is one of the best classes in this game. So they make the Bard a full spell caster. So when you get to the max level, you'll have level six spell slots. Not every class gets full spell casting. For example, like a Paladin will only get level three spell slots. So they get full spell casting, letting them cast some of the most powerful spells in the game. A nice benefit is at level 10, they can pick two from any spell that pretty much most classes can learn. There's some exceptions to it, but they get a wide variety of spells. They also get the Cantra Vicious Mockery, which is really fun. It's just like an insult and it gives a disadvantage on the opponent's next attack roll. Disadvantage on attack rolls is huge because if the target is disadvantaged, they have to roll two die and they use the lower amount. So if they roll a low number, they're not going to hit your your character. So the best bard, I would say, is the sword bard. It's just extremely powerful. It gets the ability to do flourishes, which allows you to attack two people with your sword. And you can do that twice. So that's four attacks. And you can also flourish with your bow. So you can shoot twice and then shoot twice for four attacks. And then, yeah, the, the Bard itself is a really fun class too. It has some of the best dialogue options. It also gives you an extra short rest. So you can rest short rest three times per long rest, which is really nice. I think that the Bard itself is a very powerful class and one that's really fun to play too. I would say that for the first time, Bard is S tier easily. I would highly recommend anyone play as a bard because it's just they're a fun class one they get to some of the best dialogue options they're charisma based so you're not going to worry about failing dialogue roles they're just an incredibly interesting class it's kind of the mixture between spell casting and getting in their, and getting in people's faces with your swords the lore bard is good too it's more of a spell caster bard but i prefer the sword bard because they still have all the spell casting but they also get the ability to attack a lot more so yeah, the Bard is incredible. Definitely an S-tier class. Next, we got ourselves the Cleric. And the Cleric's a funky one because you do get a Cleric early on in the game. You get Shadowheart, who's a trickery Cleric. Now, there's a ton of different subclasses of Cleric, and that's where it gets confusing for some new players. But Life Domain is good if you want to play as more of a healer role. However, in Baldur's Gate, you should probably focus more on offense because the less damage you take, the less you need to heal, and it just ends up being more effective that way. The absolute best cleric is the Tempest Cleric. So this gives us, like, 
This At level 2, you get an ability that lets you roll the highest amount of damage on your lightning spells or thunder spells, which is incredible because with spells that create water, it'll double the damage, and then you can make it do the maximum amount of damage because most of these, like you see Thunder Wave there, you could roll two ones on the die and only do two damage. But if you use the Channel Divinity, you can roll maximum amount of damage. So the Tempest Cleric is actually pretty, I would say, an S-tier choice. The War Domain is pretty good too. You get a bonus action attack three times per short rest at level 1, which is really nice. And the light domain is good. The uh, life, tempest, and uh, war domain all get heavy armor. Same as the, na the nature domain as well gets heavy armor. The light domain only gets medium armor, but they get the ability to reduce or give disadvantage to attack rolls on the enemy, so they're less. They're a bit more hard to hit. The cleric in general is an incredible class, but I would say as a whole, this is one that you could also probably put up in the S tier. The only difficulty with the cleric is you get one. Likely you're going to use Shadowheart. If you don't use Shadowheart, then hey, play as a cleric. They're an S tier class in general. I would say probably... No, nah, I would say the cleric is an S tier choice too. For your first time, getting heavy armor, getting a ton of spells, and being able to attack really... Like, honestly, they can attack quite hard. The Tempest cleric is by far the best choice. So, if you want a strong offensive cleric that kind of plays like Thor, go Tempest cleric. You will not be disappointed. Uh, if you play as the other clerics, you're probably A tier. Tempest Cleric, War Domain, even Life Domain is, S, I would say, S tier. It's a bit more focused on healing, but that can be really great as well. But, yeah, for a first-time player, having heavy armor is really nice. Next, we got ourselves the Druid. So, the Druid's cool. I'm a huge fan of the Druid myself. Not everyone is, though. Uh, what's different about the Druid is you have Wild Shape. So, you can transform into an animal and do animal stuff, Wild Shape. And you can attack in your Druid form. The Druid also is a full spellcaster, so they get all these all the different spells. There's three types of Druids. There's a Spore Druid, which is like a Necromancer. There's a Moon Druid, which is the Wild Shape one. They get special Wild Shape forms, like they get the Bear form. They get Mirror Madon forms at level 10. Really fun if you like to go into Wild Shape form. And then they also have the Land Druid, which the Land Druid's kind of just like a, it's like a wizard sorcerer type deal. It does spell casting mainly, but they have the Wild Shape to fall back on if if all things go wrong. The nice thing about Wild Shape is, is extra health. So this is the tankiest class as well. The Moon Druid is the by far the tankiest class in this game. They also get some pretty good cantrips, like Shalala early on is really useful. And they also can cast spells like Ice Knife and Thunder Wave. So the Druid itself is really powerful, but it is complex. I would usually say the Druid is like an S tier class, but it is a, it's a bit complex for new players, I would say, because of the Wild Shape shenanigans knowing which spells to take. If you go with the land druid, you need to know which circle of the land to take. So I'll put it, put it in the A tier because it is really useful. It's got spell casting. You can even you can get up in the face and attack with a druid. But the wild shape shenanigans gets a little bit complex for new players, but still, it's a nice panic button, so I would put it in the A tier. It's just a little bit more complex. Next we got the fighter, and I really like the fighter. I actually turned Karlock, who is a barbarian, into a fighter my first ever time playing. Because the fighter itself is just extremely powerful. So, there's three distinct subclasses of the fighter, and two of them are standouts to me. So, fighters get... Fighters are actually a good way to start, because they get constitution saving throw proficiency. That's one of the big benefits. If you have constitution saving throw proficiency, you'll hold concentrations on spells longer. And you might think, the fighter is not really a spellcaster, but the Eldritch Knight is. So, that's one of the subclasses at level 3. There's three subclasses, Eldritch Knight... Battlemaster and Champion. The Champion has an increased hit of or increased critical hit chance, which is nice, but it's just not as effective as some of the other benefits here. Uh, I don't know if I would put it. Like if you went Champion, the Champion's probably B tier. But as a whole, the there's two subclasses that really stand out. The Eldritch Knight, I would probably okay. So the Eldritch Knight, I would probably say is A tier. Uh, the Eldritch Knight is a bit complex because it is a spellcaster as well as a fighter, and you combine your weapon. The best way to play as an Eldritch Knight is to actually throw your weapon, which is kind of different for most people. But the one subclass that I would say is best for a new player is the uh, Battlemaster. So the Battlemaster actually gets some crowd control options for their attacks. They get the uh, menacing attack, which can cause a target to become frightened and not move or attack, which is really nice. The fighter itself is really great because they get heavy armor, they get all the weapons, they get a they get a heal, they can heal themselves, they can give themselves an extra action with action surge at level two. So it is a really great class overall, especially for first time players. I would recommend definitely play as a fighter. Number one, battle master fighter. 
So the Battlemaster Fighter is S tier. The Eldritch Knight is probably A tier for new players because it is a bit complex. You want to be binding your weapon and then throwing your weapon. That is a bit complex. The Eldritch Knight could even be a B tier for new players. And then the Champion is just increased critical hit chance. That also probably is B tier. But as a whole, I would say the Fighter is S tier because the Battlemaster is just such a good subclass. And uh, very straightforward. Next, we got the Monk, which is one of my favorite classes. I love the Monk, but I do think it's a bit complex for new players because the mechanics that they use. So the Monk is mostly effective with its offhand attacks. Like you, you mostly want to be doing your offhand attacks. However, they do get uh, simple weapons, short swords, and it depends, I guess, on the, the race that you play because different races will get different weapons. But um, yeah, the thing with the Monk is they mostly will be doing unarmed attacks and things like Flurry of Blows. So they, they use key points and uh, the Flurry of Blows here, it's basically like two punches as a bonus action. So if you have any items that adds damage to your attacks, like there's gloves that'll add like a 1d6 of damage to your attacks, that gets applied twice. So that's like tw effectively potential of 12 damage, which is really great. They also get the key. So the keys are like their spell slots, basically. There's three subclasses of Monk, and that's where it gets confusing, because there's a Shadow Monk, which is really fun. I think the Shadow Monk's awesome, but I would probably put it below the Barbarian in terms of for new players, because it is complex knowing where to go in the Shadows. The Way of the Four Elements Monk, I would probably put in the C tier, because it is also extremely complex. But the Way of the Open Hand is, I would say, the strongest single class damage in the game, I would say, because they get their Flurry of Blows, but they get some other versions that are upgraded. Um, they are great. Especially late in the game, you can multi-class this with the Rogue Thief to get extra bonus action. So you can do Flurry of Blows twice for effectively four punches, which is a lot. Um, there's gloves you can get that add a 1d10 of damage, so that's a potential of 40 extra damage there, which is incredible. However, the only thing is, it is a bit more complex. I personally love the Monk. I think on a tier list, I would say the Monk is probably S tier for overall damage. But for a new player, the Monk's a bit complex. Um, similar to Barbarian. They also have their unarmored defense, which adds the wisdom modifier to their, their um, armor class. So that is one thing that's different about them is they got that going on. They also have dexterous attacks. So attacks with monk weapons and unarmed attacks. Scale with your dexterity instead of strength if your dexterity is higher. So you can go full in on a dexterity monk. Um, attacks with monk weapons and unarmed attacks deal 1 to 4 bludgeoning damage unless their normal damage is higher. And they get a bonus unarmed strike. So after making an attack with a monk weapon or while unarmed, you can make a bonus action attack. So they got a lot of options for attacking, but they're just a bit more complex. I think they're S tier in terms of their strength, but for a new player, you're probably better off going with a different class. Next, we got the Paladin. I'm a huge fan of the Paladin. So with the Paladin, you get these cool armors. Um, so depending on what oath you pick, you get a really fancy armor that's unique to them. The armor isn't that good, just heads up, it's not powerful, but it looks cool. That's one thing about it. The Paladin gets their Lay Hands charges, which gives healing, so they can heal. Again, I mentioned earlier, healing is not the way that you want to go in Baldur's Gate 3, typically. They also get benefits against Undeads and Fiends with their uh, Divine Sense, and they get the Channel Oath charges. Depending on what Oath you pick, I personally am a big fan of Oath of Vengeance. Up to level 5 is typically the strongest, where this class kind of... Level 5 gets huge benefits. They get Misty Step, which is a bonus action teleport. They get Hold Person, one of the best spells in the game. And they get good amounts of damage. They also can daze the target and deal additional radiant damage. And the Oath, you can become an Oath Breaker if you break your Oath. So that is cool too. It's Secret 4th class. I'm a huge fan of the Paladin, but I think it's also a little bit more complex. Unless you really enjoy role-playing. My first time playing, just for example, my first time playing, I played as a Paladin, and I loved it. I played as five levels of Paladin, seven levels of Warlock, and I got three attacks because I didn't play on Honor Mode, so that was a lot of fun. I think that that's a very great combination of classes. I am, however, not going to put it in the S tier just because it can be a bit confusing keeping your Oath on a first time playing through this game because you're going to probably break your Oath at some point, and that can be upsetting for some people. Like I do have comments from people where they... They're really upset that they broke their oath, and I don't understand, because the Oath Breaker is really good as well, and you can always pay a 1,000 gold to re-establish your oath. As a whole, though, I would probably say they're A tier. I really do like the Paladin, but it just comes with some extra complexities. They're a half spellcaster, so unlike the Bard, who does full martial damage and full spellcasting, the Paladin only does half. So, the biggest benefit to the Paladin is at level 2, when they add in Divine Smite, which can add additional radiant damage to your attacks. That is really good, so... They're a fun class. I'm going to put them in the A tier. They're just not as straightforward for new players as the others. 
Next, we got the Ranger. Now, the Ranger is an interesting one. Um, what makes the Ranger fun is the fact that you can uh, get a Find Familiar for free, but that's a spell that a wizard can also cast. The Ranger itself is, I would say, actually a bit more complex. They do have three cool subclasses, so there's... The only, off, the only awful thing about the Ranger is one of their subclasses is great for multi-classing, and then the two others don't get good to level 11. So the Hunter Ranger and the Beastmaster Ranger, they get their big power spike at level 11, which is literally in Act 3, pretty late in the game. But the Gloomstalker Ranger gets the benefits pretty early on, so that is nice. If you want to play as a Gloomstalker, level 5 is when it starts to peak. Take 5 levels of Gloomstalker, add in the Rogue, add in the Fighter, you name it. You can multi-class pretty well with that class. However, the only thing with the Ranger is it's a bit confusing, and it just feels like it's a weaker version of other classes. Similar to the Paladin, it does get spell slots, but it only gets half the spell slots of other classes. So, um, they only get up to level 3 spells. You can pick things that'll give you, like, fire resistance, which is nice, and then you also get the ability to take heavy armor at level 1. So, there's a few classes that'll give heavy armor at level 1. The Ranger, the Cleric, um... I guess any of the class that naturally would have it, but if you multi-class in the Ranger, you can get heavy armor proficiencies. The only two classes that if you multi-class in later that'll give you heavy armor is the Cleric and the Ranger, so it's because of their subclass or their other benefits there, but I would say as a whole that the Rangers, it is a bit more complex than other classes. Um, it is straightforward in some regards, but it just doesn't have the damage output as the other, so you're going to feel like you're not doing something right. I played one of my, like, for a chunk of the game i played as a ranger and i didn't find it to be very strong so i am going to put it in the b tier because it could potentially be a tier like i feel it's a bit more straightforward than the monk but it just doesn't have the damage output that the other classes have and it just it doesn't feel like it's very powerful next we get the rogue now i am conflicted on how i feel about the rogue because it's a great class but uh you get austerian who's going to be a rogue uh so we already have someone that's a rogue they get their sneak attacks, so you deal extra damage if you have advantage on a target. You also can trigger the sneak attacks if you're up close and you have a teammate nearby, so you can do that and get your sneak attacks off. But it's just a weaker class. They don't get an extra attack at level 5. They don't get an extra attack at all. The three subclasses are interesting, but they cap off at level 3 in terms of how good they are. So, the Rogue Thief is my personal favorite. At level 3, it gives you an extra bonus action, so you'll have two bonus actions, which means you can offhand attack twice, which is nice. The, uh, Rogue Assassin gives benefits to the first turn of, of combat, so you can get extra initiative, you get extra attacks, and it pairs well with things like the Gloomstalker Ranger. And then the Arcane Trickster Rogue is just not good at all. The Arcane Trickster is kind of like a mix between a magic class and a rogue, but it doesn't it doesn't translate well from D&D &D tabletop to Baldur's Gate 3. So I would say the Rogue is probably C tier, even F tier potentially. It's just not a very powerful class in general and complex as heck, so... Yeah, I don't think it's that great. It's a good class if you multi-class, but going 12 levels of rogue is really tough to find powerful, but that's just my thoughts. Next, we got the Sorcerer. I'm a huge fan of the Sorcerer. This is another charisma-based class, so they use charisma to spell to spell cast, which is awesome. They also get a wide variety of spells, so you can pick four cantrips there to cover many different damage types. They also get some great spells, like Shield is a huge one, plus five armor class. Magic Missile is guaranteed to hit. Chromatic Orb, can you can change the damage type. The Sorcerer is incredible. Also, you get to pick your subclass at the start of the game. I won't recommend the Wild Magic, but the Draconic Sorcerer gives Mage Armor at will, so you always have 13 armor class, making them tankier. And the Draconic also gets additional hit points, so one hit point extra per level. On top of all of that, you get to pick a Dragon Ancestor color. Um, so if you pick the Fire one... You're going to add your charisma modifier to your damage at level six so you get a plus five you can get potentially a plus five to your your fire damage on things like scorch and ray which hits multiple times that's really good um another subclass that i really enjoy is the storm sorcerer so you can get a as if after you use a spell you can cast fly as a bonus action and fly around without getting hit so the draconic and the storm sorcerer are incredibly powerful i would recommend these the sorcerer is probably the the best choice if you want to play as a if you want to be a magic class and just cast spells the sorcerer is s tier easily so sorcerer if you want to be a spell caster bard if you want to do crowd control spell cast and fight it's just the best at everything cleric if you want to be more of a utility role and then fighter if you want to be a martial class these are the best and easiest to understand straightforward 
the sorcerer is just about pure damage and that's what makes it so great i'm a huge sorcerer fan i think this is my this is my favorite class in the game they're just very powerful in general so yeah storm sorcerer or draconic you can't go wrong next we got the warlock i think the warlock's a pretty decent one but i think that the warlock's best to be like if you were to multi-class it especially since your first playthrough probably won't be on the hardest difficulty if you multi-class the the warlock then you can do the pact of the blade so pact of the blade gives you an extra attack at level five this actually stacks with the other classes extra cl attack so the ranger gets an extra attack at level five the paladin does the fighter does uh the bard sword bard does and uh the monk does and the barbarian does so putting in the warlock can actually give you that extra attack as well which is really really nice um, I'm a big fan of them. They also get Eldritch Blast, which is the best cantrip in the game. This scales off your total level. So even if you take only like two levels of Warlock, you'll still at level 12 be doing three beams, which is really good. Force damage is the best damage type in the game, by the way. Um, you also get the choice of subclasses. The Great Old One or the Fiend are my favorites. The Fiend, you can get Fireball and Wall of Fire, which are two great spells. Um, you also can get Armor of Agathis, which is a great spell that gives you temporary health. And they also get the Dark One's Blessing, so when you take out a creature, you get temporary health as well. I would say the Warlock is a good class, but it's complex because you have to short rest so often because they don't get their spell. Every other caster gets their spells back at long rest. The Warlock gets their packed magic. It's a little bit different than spell slots. They get them back at short rest, but they only get two of them. So it's. I would say that this is actually... I love the Warlock, don't get me wrong, with this placement. I do think it's a bit more complex for new players. It actually... It could... Ah, this is tough. It does have a really good ability to be able to fight in close range, but then also cast spells. I would probably... Uh, this is a tough one. I might even say the Warlock is A tier. It's a, It could be B tier, A to B tier. I think it's complex because of the packed magic, but it's pretty straightforward. Short rest often. They pair well with a bard. And even going sword bard level 6 and then warlock level 6 is actually a really good combination because you get the you get three attacks, they're both charisma based. I think that's the biggest thing is this is a charisma based class. So the warlock is fun for role playing as well. Uh, I would yeah, I would say that it is a a a tier choice. Finally, we got the wizard. Now Gale is going to be a wizard, so if you're going to be playing with Gale and have him on your team, he's going to cover all bases. I would say that the wizard is probably the most complex class in the game because they're like a sorcerer, but they don't get the extra damage buffs. They don't get the extra armor that you get from being a draconic sorcerer. They do allow you to swap out your spells, though. So, this, the wizard's the only class that scales off of intelligence. So, if you really want to play as an intelligence-based class, go with this. But charisma, I think, is better for your first time playing. Um, the wizard itself is a great class. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not trashing the wizard here. It's... Just a bit complex because you have to know what spells to prepare and when. On a second playthrough, the wizard is fantastic because you're going to know the game a whole lot better. And then with this, you can you can choose your spells a lot more freely. And it's just a easier time in general. I love the wizard, but I do know it's complex for most players. So I am going to put the wizard in the C tier as well. Maybe even, I would Gale's going to be your wizard, so you shouldn't roll two wizards, I don't say, because they're a bit squishier than like a sorcerer or a bard or a cleric. So for I guess I'll kind of recap everything here. So the full spellcasters are sorcerers, bards, clerics, warlock, kind of. They have packed magic and uh, the wizard. The half casters are the paladin, the ranger and like the eldritch knight fighter and the uh, arcane trickster rogue. They're a little bit different the, pa the paladin's probably the best if you want to play as a half spellcaster but <clears> own <throat> the druids is full spellcaster too the martial classes the fighter the war cleric the barbarian the monk to a certain degree the ranger um so those are and the, the paladin so those are the ones that you would want to play as if you want to get up in the face so yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments if you're curious what class you should play let me know what kind of play style you want to play as in the comments and i can help guide you in the right direction but a sorcerer, bard, cleric, or fighter is a great choice, and even the paladin, druid, and warlock are awesome. But the others are just a little bit more complex, so I just wanted to rank these and let you guys know my thoughts for the best class to play as, as your first time playing Baldur's Gate 3. If you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.